There are thousands of AI tutorials out there, but most of them skip the part that actually matters, how to make automations work in your real, messy, and chaotic business. Now, I'm not here to trash tutorials. They're great at showing you tools, but the problem is they jump straight into building. But in real businesses, that's step four. Before you even touch a tool though, you need to map the process, clean the inputs, and tick all the boxes of the pre-build checklist. That's what this video is about. And if you stick around to the end, I'll give you the automation planning worksheet that I use to map, clean, and prep every single automation before starting. So let's get into it. Now, someone on YouTube creating a tutorial, a lot like myself, jumps straight into the tool because let's be honest, it's actually the fun part. We all love seeing the outcomes and the builds, but you've got to remember they don't know your team, they don't know your tools, your tech debt, or your constraints, and they definitely don't know the ins and outs of your manual process that has led up to the point of you actually wanting to automate this process in the first place. Now, what this actually leads to is oversimplification. And then when you try to replicate the tutorial for your own use, it ends up failing. And you might have experienced that before, right? Whereas in contrast, in practice, you'll spend 80% of your time with a flowchart, interviewing the team, and mapping the exact business process. So let's open up our automation planning worksheet. And we're going to use this worksheet every time you approach a new automation or AI project. This is the most important prep work that you should do before you open any automation. So firstly, we need to work out the specific problem we're solving so that we can actually work backwards to our inputs. And at this point, you might be like, Obviously, Simon, we're going to start with a specific problem in mind, but what we're talking about here is specific. What exact manual steps are you looking to augment? Have you actually run those manual steps yourself before? or sat in the shoes of the user who does that day to day. And when you do this, you'd be surprised by how many people realize they're actually trying to solve two to three problems instead of just starting out with one clear scope specific problem to start with. So we're actually going to use the example from down here. Take CV submissions from a website form and ensure each candidate is added to our CRM with their details passed and categorized by skill level. So basically we have an open job and we're taking the submitted CVs, scanning the information and uploading those summaries to our CRM, which we can pretend in this case is HubSpot. So we know exactly what specific problem we're solving here and the outcome that we want to achieve, well, we're probably looking to save our HR department, let's say as an estimate, two hours per day with this data entry. So every time we put up a new role for our business, at the moment we're manually spending two hours per day with data entry, putting it into our CRM and actually reading through those CVs. So instead of doing that, the outcome we want is that two hours saved so that they can focus on other initiatives instead. And how will we know that this automation is successful? And we've got some prompts here to you know, what should actually happen? Where should data end up? What format? And we're gonna link this directly to the outcomes that we want to achieve. So we will know this is successful if there is actually zero manual intervention from the HR department every time we put a job up. So it needs to take all that information and actually get us to a short list of candidates, all their details in the CRM, and categorized by skill level. So we're going from two hours a day to zero manual intervention. Now a tutorial might show you is an Airtable database with 10 rows of clean data. But in real life, the Airtable has 10,000 rows, three different people use it, half the fields aren't even used anymore, the other half are spelt differently, and the team has probably overwritten some values with hard-coded values versus the others which are still using the formula. And if you've ever worked in any sort of business, you will feel this pain, you'll understand this well. But you'll only know this by following step two, which is visually mapping out the flow step by step. And there's a really specific way to do this, which is gonna make it so much quicker for you. And if you're doing this for a client, I'd highly recommend sitting with the actual user of Airtable in this case, and watching the exact step-by-step -step process rather than just asking them to draw out a flowchart of what happens. Let me tell you from personal experience, I did not start like this once. And what looked like a two month project on a flow chart became an eight month project because it hadn't been mapped out side by side with the team doing the actual work. I just took that flow chart at face value and didn't actually understand or sit beside the team to see how complex the inner workings of that actual process were. Safe to say, lesson learned from that. But we have a really good way to start this, which is we start with the bookends. We start with the actual trigger of the process. What is gonna be our trigger for this CV summarization? 
and what is going to be the output? What do we want the end result to be? And those are really easy to define because we've actually already talked about them in the outcomes. And we always start this way because it's then easy to work out what comes in the middle and actually build from start to finish backwards. And you can use absolutely any medium you want for this. This could be sticky notes, paper, or the NAN canvas, which is what we're going to use as well. But we're just using it to draw, not build. And don't forget, if you watch this video till the end, I'll be showing you where to access this automation planning worksheet for free so that you can actually use this before you start building any projects for yourself or your clients. So let's go to NAN and we're going to define the trigger and the output of where we want to get to. So we're just going to open up a blank canvas here called workflow mapping. And we're just going to use the sticky notes to actually visually draw out the start and the end of the process. So I'll have one for the trigger and one for the outcome. Now, if we remind ourselves of the task, we're taking in CV submissions in a website form. We're summarizing that information and then adding it into our CRM. So the outcome is actually going to be something like HubSpot CRM data uploaded. And the input here is going to be some sort of submission into our website form or job application. And this could be coming from an external site like Indeed, or it could be an internal process on our own website. So now we have where we want to start which is actually taking in data from a website form. We know where we want to get to, clean data in our HubSpot CRM. Now we can start mapping out what comes in between that. And what we're effectively doing is mapping the journey between the start and the end here. And at this point, right, we're not thinking about the specifics of the data. We're doing a high level mapping exercise because it's going to help us understand exactly what steps and what decisions need to be made in between that. So we've got the outcome, which is uploaded data into the HubSpot CRM. So at some point, we're going to need to have clean data. So we might need to do some data formatting before we upload to our HubSpot CRM. Now to get that clean data, we know that we're not just taking information directly from our CV and just uploading a CV directly. We might be taking the actual CV file, but we know that we're going to need to summarize that information in some way, because what we actually wanted to do was pass their details and categorize it by skill level. So we're going to need to take a bulk in input here of their CV and actually get information from that bulk input. So we're probably going to need some sort of AI summarization stage or optical character recognition. And I only know this from experience, but I know that if, if something is uploaded as an image, for example, we'll be able to pull the text from that image. But what we're basically doing is saying, actually, we want to pull specific data from the CV. And when you think about it, that's actually two separate steps. So we might want to summarize the actual text, but we might have different formats that come in. So we could have a CV that's in docx format, a CV that's an image, a CV that's a PDF. We might have a decision to make here on how we process that data and actually pull the text. So pull text from CV. But what we might have is several different options here, like we mentioned, one for docx, one for PDF, and one for images here. And we'd need different technology potentially to pull information from each of these or different nodes inside NAN. So what we've got now is we receive the data. We are working out the format of the data so that we can pull the text from the CV. We're then going to use AI or some sort of mapping to pull that text and actually summarize it, pass the details, categorize that by skill level. We're probably going to clean the data if we can't do that in the AI stage. And then we're going to upload it ultimately into HubSpot, which is our CRM. Now, this is all working on the assumption that this is the these are the exact steps that the human is taking whilst they're doing this manually right now, receiving a job application, logging onto the system. They're working out the format and actually pulling that information. And this is the part that's done by a human now, actually summarizing that information. They're then actually cleaning up the data and putting it directly into the HubSpot CRM. So you can see how working step by step, we're working out which steps would actually be replaced by the workflow automation here. And ultimately, all we're doing here is actually working out three things. What are the inputs that we're receiving at a certain stage? What transformations do we need to make? And what are the outputs? And we need to understand that for every single stage. So in the trigger, we might have a website form that sends an API webhook. So we might have a webhook node that starts here. And that's actually what's receiving the data. Or it could be actually they're just filling in a form and we've got actually a form being completed here. So we know the inputs there. We see the data that comes through and then we're like, OK, now we need to decide how to process it. So we're going to have a condition here. And the goal is to understand how the automation actually works 
before doing any build work. So 80% of the work, honestly, 80% of the work should be done before you even open up a tool like NAN, unless you're using that tool to draw like we are now. And if you only know how to jump to the build step, which is what most tutorials teach, you're missing the foundation where real business problems are gonna be solved. So the next stage is actually working out those edge cases, the split conditions, the if this happens, then this scenarios. And this is where a lot of people get tripped up and end up building indefinitely large flows because they haven't gone through the motions of actually planning it out like this. So that brings us to step three, which is breaking down logic and conditions. Like we said, the if this, then what should happen scenarios. And you can do this directly on the canvas like we're gonna do now, or you can fill out this sheet if this happens, then what should happen? And give an example here. And we're ultimately working out the input, the transformation and the output for every single stage that we've got here. But also considering edge cases like what should happen if the data is missing? What should happen if the format is unexpected? What should happen if the external service fails? And we'll come to that in a moment. So let's build it out exactly how we would. I know from using NAN that we're going to have a condition here. So actually, let's move that across. Let's add a condition. So we're saying if it's a certain format, then we're going to take different actions based on that. But we actually potentially have multiple actions here. So instead of an if, we're probably going to use a switch node, which allows us to say, actually, let's say there's three outputs here. And actually, we have one going up to docx, one to PDF, one to images there. And for example, if we're having docx, then we could probably use the extract from file. So we're going to convert from a document that's been uploaded to a text file. So we might have extract from PDF, for example. We'd have extract from docx. X. The images might be a completely separate scenario where actually it's not as simple to just use one node here. We might have an external OCR model like Mistral to actually extract text from that. So we might have three different paths here that can take a different route. So this is where we're really starting to get into the different conditions of a workflow and how this might play out. But you can waste so much time if you don't do this up front and actually start reworking as you build. We're then gonna have some sort of LLM chain to actually summarize in here. And what we'll do is we'll require a specific output format. So we have this output parser that gives us this clean data. So we don't necessarily have to have this data formatting stage. And then what we're doing is uploading our information into HubSpot and we'll do create or update a contact. And then we'll obviously add in all our credentials, etc. And then we've got to consider the edge cases. What should happen if data is missing? So if we do not receive data, we receive empty data from here, then what should we do? Well, we should probably throw something like an error and stop the workflow. And what we can do is in the nodes, say that actually let's get it to retry on fail. But if it just continues to fail, then we're going to use this second error output and throw an error. And what we can get this to do separately is to send us an email or send us a message if there's an error. What happens if the format is unexpected? So we receive a CSV through here. Well, then we might want to have a fallback outcome. So we add an option in here, we have a fallback output and the fallback output sends a data format that isn't one of these to a third route. And that third route could just be sending us a notification to say one has failed and it needs some manual intervention. Could be sending it to a member of the HR department to actually assess the error. And what happens if an external service fails? So if they, say for example, we have the LLM attached to OpenAI, what happens if that fails? Well, we need to set up edge cases for that, like fallback models. So we can actually say, actually, instead of OpenAI, we're gonna use Anthropic as a fallback. Or if, for example, our HubSpot fails, maybe we need to add in this additional error output that says, actually, we've got to the final stage, we've got all the data, but we're not able to add, actually add it into HubSpot. So send this to the human who's supervising this to actually put that in manually. So once we've done this, are we ready now to build? Well, let's go to our checklist. And this is the pre-build checklist, super important before you start building anything. I can clearly explain what the automation does in one sentence. We absolutely can do that. I know exactly where the data comes from and where it needs to go. We've mapped that out, mapped it out visually. I've identified all decision points and conditional logic. So this was our if this, then this, scenarios. And it's important to note at this point, whilst we have a good understanding now of the workflow, there will be things that come up in the build that make you add decision points that you didn't consider here. But this gets you 80% of the way so that you understand how to approach the problem in the first place. I know which tools or services I need for each step. I have access to all the required integrations and API keys. So that will be part of the build step. And I've considered error scenarios and fallbacks, which we have as well. We've got some additional considerations to make here. Where do I access the API keys? Do I need to set them up? Do I need to contact clients IT department to get those keys? And then we can talk about success metrics. How will 
we measure if this works and that will be all based on the outcomes that we've defined in the first place. So based on the checklist, we're done. We're ready. We've defined our end goal, mapped out the flow and broken down the core logic and edge cases. Now I'm not saying you should stop watching AI tutorials. In fact, step-by-step -step builds are actually essential in the learning phase, but they only give you one piece of the puzzle because they're actually jumping straight to step four, but hopefully now you can see how to survive steps one to three. So now you know how to plan a build, should we actually get building? In this next video, I'll show you the only nodes you need to understand inside NAN to give you 80% of the value.